So you've just discovered this world called pottery and it's like a clay island full of building and sculpting and etching with pottery wheels and creativeness and palm trees and glazing and unicorns and it's like what? Well here are five beginner tips I wish I knew when I started on my journey so hopefully this helps you on yours. Good luck. Number one, get connected. I know it's quite hard for a lot of people to join pottery classes during this time, but you can also use social media and join some groups and chat with some professionals and see what everyone else is doing out there. Don't be afraid to ask for advice. I know when I started out doing ceramics, I was very hesitant to ask people for help, but it turns out if you ask someone nine out of 10 times, they will help you. So don't be afraid. People usually enjoy dispensing advice, I've realized. In this way, you can see how the entire pottery process works and learn a lot faster. I know a lot of professionals, we each have our little secrets that we don't tell, but that's normal. But the basics, we're more than willing to share. Number two, do not go out on a spending spree. So you're excited, you wanna do pottery, and you're like, what do I need? I need glazes, I need a kiln, I need a pottery wheel, I need clay, I need some of the extras. So after a while, it all kind of adds up. So I would suggest maybe start small. If you can't join a class right now, just buy the bare minimum and basics. You can always see if there are people in your town or in your city that have the larger kilns that can charge you to fire your stuff. In the beginning, that works out a lot cheaper than buying everything yourself. And also some of the larger kilns only take three phase power and normal households only have one phase power. So that's one thing to consider. You may have to go ask the municipality for some extra power, which does take a long time. So be sure to take care of which kiln you purchase and just make sure that it um, number one fits in your house and number two, that it will work. Number three, learn how to wedge your clay properly. Learning how to wedge clay is very important if you're going to do wheel work. It just helps to get the air bubbles out. I know sometimes if you buy clay, it's quite compressed already. So if you're hand building, it's usually fine. But if you're using a roller and rolling out your clay, remember you can always just pop your little air bubbles with a needle tool and just roll it again. Air bubbles can cause cracks in the kiln and sometimes they may cause explosions depending on what temperature you're firing at. So just be careful. Air bubbles, they may look sweet and innocent, but sometimes they just cause havoc. Number four is very, very, very important. Recycle your clay. You will see once you started how much clay you actually could waste if you throw it all away. If you're cutting away, if you're working on the wheel and you're trimming, if you make mistakes and you have to start again, there's so much clay that you could potentially be throwing down the, not well don't th throw it down the drain because the clogs drains you should probably get a filter um, but that's irrelevant right now so for example some of my shards that I have from working on the wheel I'll just put in a bag add some water let it stand for a few days and wedge it a little and add some more water and I can use it for slip or I could use it again for hand building or anything number five health and safety this is the most important one. I usually use a wet cloth when I'm cleaning my countertops because clay, when it dries, what does it turn into? Dust. I have very bad sinuses, so I always wear goggles and masks just to ensure that if I'm cleaning, it doesn't go into my face, my eyes, my mouth, and my nose. I also never sweep, always mop to keep the dust from floating up and going everywhere because <laughs> Sweeping doesn't help. Also, wash your hands regularly, but um, I think most of us have that one down. Also, check under your nails. If you don't have one of those little scrubbers, just get one because clay loves to stick under the nails. And also remember to moisturize. You'll soon find out if you haven't worked with clay for a whole day, your hand kind of needs a little bit of moisture because it's so dry, it's literally going <laughs> when you open your hand. So uh, yeah. Moisturize is very important to keep it soft inside. So I hope those five tips will help you for your future pottery endeavors. Let me know if you have any questions. Pop some comments below. I look forward to hearing from you guys. And thanks for watching. 
Bye.